So in this video, you're going to spend the next 20 hours in a relatively famous province called Ningbing, which actually was featured in a Kong Island movie set. So without further ado, let's begin this video. What's up guys? So after a 2 hours drive, we are finally here at our first stop which is a Baidin Pagoda and our route is a little bit unconventional because we just came straight from Noi Bai International Airport. So our first stop is Baidin Pagoda which has a series of records. So we're going to check that out now and Rose is settling the ticket price. Anyway, the one that we are here is called uh, Tree Gate and then was built by stone. There are two uh, lakes from the two sides here, which is, uh, they call it is the two uh, dragon eyes, bring the meanings of uh, prosperity. And then in front, there's the thing. Uh, that one is to prevent all the evil spirit. So there are a couple of packages that you can choose from. So a private tour is actually 2 million dong, which is equivalent to about 120 sing dollars. So this is one of the biggest temples in Vietnam and there are a couple of records. If I have four or five, if I'm not wrong, but what are the four? The largest bronze Buddha statue in Asia. The longest Adha corridor in Asia. The largest um, Maitreya statue in Southeast Asia and also the tallest pagoda tower in Southeast Asia. So yeah, those are the couple of records for the temple itself. So we are going to explore it right now with a private tour. <laughs> Ten times. So the two statue like for the two, one is to uh, motivate people to become a kind people to do good things uh, for the society and the other one is to prevent people from doing or like commit uh, crime or like evil acts. So there's a total of 502 uh, Ahad statue uh, all made of stone. And then the Buddha inside, there's a total of 10,000. And then uh, it's a uh, made of uh, bronze but uh, coat with uh, gold. Also forget to mention that this tour is going to take about 2 hours and we were here at about 5 so we're going to leave this place quite late. Uh, we're going to reach our hotel also quite late. Probably can only visit one place today on the first day of Ningbing so probably going to explore more tomorrow. We are at the Buddha of the Three Times Hall. So basically, there are three statues inside representing the past, the present, and the future. So according to the description Rose gave to me, basically this Buddha is uh, fat because he contains all the people's sorrow and basically he always has a bright smile. So this one here is the biggest Buddha statue in Asia. It's 10 meter tall and it's 100 tons in weight. <coughs> And the special thing about this place is they actually building the statue here first and then all the pagoda is built following that. For the small statue you see on the wall here, we have 1,161. Okay, so this is the place where they keep the remains of the Buddha corpse. Yeah, and then uh, it was brought back from uh, India and it uh, was kept uh, at the level 13 which is the highest level of this tower and this tower is also the tallest uh, tower in Asia that uh, keep the so-called re remaining of the, the Buddha. So currently we are right now on the highest floor of the pagoda and it gives really really awesome view. As you can see over there the sun is just setting. But there's stairs from level 1 to level 2 then you have to take the lift from level 2 all the way to level 12 and there's another level that's level 13 which you also have to take the stairs. Yeah, but level 12 is good enough and it's a little bit narrow and if you're scared of heights, uh, just take care. So that's it for Baidin Pagoda. It cost a total of 800000 which was quite a mess which we will explain later in a bit but that's all. We didn't go for one attraction which is the caves uh, and as you can see it's already very very dark. If you can come here at night, it's also nice because there will be lights there and now you all cannot see me so I'll explain to you all guys in a bit. We need to find our driver in the dark which is like... There. Somewhere there. 
So just to wrap up the Baiding Pagoda visit, basically it's a very very large site with multiple temples that you can check out. Uh, it's part of UNESCO heritage and the overall experience for it. I would say personally I would have wanted to go without a guide but because we aren't too sure what is around or how to get around. Uh, I would say for a first timer who visiting Baiding Pagoda, the place is a lot bigger than I expected. Experience why I would say it's okay but uh, in our case, I didn't bring enough cash. Ask them to do a bank transfer. However, something's wrong with the system. I paid them already. My bank deducted money already, but uh, for their side, they haven't received the money. So they insist that I had to make another one, which they have to receive the money on the spot. So yeah, if that ever happens to you, just take note. But highly unlikely because you won't have a bank here. <laughs> a 20 minutes drive from Baiding Pagoda and we are here. Uh, it's quite ulu, okay, it's super ulu. If you are going on motorbike, for the best. If you got a private driver or you're driving, a lot more safer. Lah. Can you see me guys? So basically we are here at Hang Mua Eco Lodge. Uh, it's too dark, there's no lights, but we're going to check in first and as you can see, it's just darkness. And that's the place we're going to climb tomorrow. You can see the light over there, like you see the two dots. The one dot at the top is the moon, the two dots is the peak, which we will be climbing there tomorrow. So we just checked in into Hang Mua Eco Lodge. What room? Uh... Flash on the screen, but now it's currently 8.30. We haven't eat dinner and their restaurant closes at 9.30 and cannot bring food in here. And it's also dark outside, so can't really show you all much. So we're gonna go eat dinner now and show you guys the restaurant place. So we order um, tomato sauce do tofu, minced meat with Thai sin, and we have uh, spring roll, and we have um, stir-fry pork. is okay. I guess you don't really have a choice like if you choose to stay here because here is like deep inside the village. What's up guys so we just came back from dinner and I'm just gonna do a quick one and two minutes room tour but as you're coming in we are staying in an individual hut single bed, queen size bed, rows, a table rack of amenities, mini fridge, TV, entire table and then here is the toilet inside. Toilet, bathtub, very very spacious, sink, wardrobe, fitting area, very very spacious. The window over there seems a bit shady, but yeah, don't know what's on top. I think it's just the heater, that's all. So that's the room tour of Hang Mua Eco Lodge. So we're just gonna take a rest for the night. We were too tired, woke up at 5 for the flight, and yeah, so stay tuned. Bye bye. guys so it's day two it's currently 5 30 a.m we're gonna make the climb to the top of Hang Mua viewpoint it's said to be 500 steps but it looks like it's way more than that but we're just gonna give it a try uh, totally missing sunrise right now as you can tell <laughs> so that's the beginning of the 500 steps so we're just gonna start and enjoy this 360 Kind of at the halfway point, I'm really very tired already. <sighs> so those are the steps, very very uneven. I think we are halfway there. But the view already looks quite nice. So yeah, taking a short break before proceeding. And to the top. Finally here, uh, right at the top, there are a couple of people here and there's a bee harassing me but overall the view looks nice however the sun has already risen so it's a little bit harsh on the lighting as well but we're gonna throw up the drone and see what shots we can get.
What's up guys, so we have just finished shooting a couple of B-rolls at the top of Hang Mua viewpoint and it's very very hot and very very tiring but all in all we took about about 25 minutes up. Here's the screenshot of the Garmin watch activity lah. So it's not that difficult. So now we're gonna head down and head back and get breakfast. So it's currently 6.50 and you can see there's a lot of people up on the slope or on the viewpoint already. If you want to have the whole place to yourself, maybe just come around five to six. There were already people climbing down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the other viewpoint. So if you are climbing down from the other one, you have to climb back up over there. So it's very tiring, which we are not going to do, but we're just going to head back. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so we have just climbed down Hang Mua viewpoint and it is a definite must try. You have to be of relative good fitness. Uh, do take note that if you are not staying at Hang Mua Eco Lodge, you do have to pay a little bit of entrance fee. But if you are staying here, it's actually free. So do take note. If Rose can do it, you can. So we are back here so I can show you guys the hut. So at night, you all couldn't see because it was dark, but now it's bright. So this is hut. 604, 603, 602 and 601 and the rest of the estates are across the land so I will bring you through a rough estate tour later so you guys know what to expect when you all come here so we're just going to cool down first because we are very sweaty from the climb just now Swimming pool another type of room over there cafe area also a spa area and here starting with the gantry so basically there are gantries there because coming here if you want to go to the Hang Mua viewpoint you have to go through and buy a ticket and how much is the ticket? I think it's about uh, 100,000 per head for Hang Mua and the Lotus uh, Pond also got ticket but um, I don't remember how much maybe 30 or 60,000 per head then you've got two head how? And then going in closer, you can, see, you can see there's a pond there and there are a couple of cabin houses over there for you to stay. And then right in front, you see lanterns heading to the front desk with rooms inside as well over there as you can see. Stepping further into the estate itself, you can see a lot of statues and a lot of trees around me because it's an eco lodge. Lah. And there are a lot of ponds as well and that pond over there, the seating at the center over there. And that building is actually where we have lunch, dinner and breakfast. As you walk along the Eco Lodge itself, there are also a couple of like tree house looking things. You can basically sit in the tree and have a rest and relax. More ponds, some more ponds, even more ponds. So there are other houses over there for you to stay. So if you are coming here, it's best to come here during the July month because it's the peak of Lotus period. We are actually here in August right now, so it's uh, not super duper nice. Lah. And there are a couple of constructions over there as well. So they are upgrading, not too sure what because they didn't mention, but for the rooms itself, there are rooms that are able to accommodate up to 6 and 10 people so if you are coming in groups it will be good but yeah uh, we're gonna head to the lotus pond to take a couple of pictures and videos let's see what we can get lah So guys, so we have finally come to the end of our stay at Hang Mua Eco Lodge. Before we head back to Hana, we still have two places to check, which is Tam Kok. So we're going to take a boat and the total cost of it was 120000 for entrance fee and 150000 for a boat. So apparently boats here are only two per boat for foreigners and four per boat for Vietnamese locals. So basically foreigners more expensive lah. And we are here right now and she got her head because it's too hot. She really got a sunburn from this morning's hike. So yeah, we're going to go to our... Wait, it's just literally there lah. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> Hi. So we will roll along this river, and this river is four kilometers long. So the whole journey will be uh, eight kilometers, which is about two hours for our journey today. So we're just gonna relax and enjoy the boat tour because it's gonna be just a boat ride, I think. I may try to fly a drone. Uh, not too sure because there's no proper landing and flying off space. I don't want to take any risk. Lah. You call yourself a photographer. If you cannot do that, row a boat, take picture and negotiate at the same time. Hey, we were there. That was the Hang Mo Cave. Okay, so we just found out from our driver that each individual boat is their own company or freelance per se because we pay 150000 to the ticketing counter at the front but this 150000 goes directly to each driver or each boat rider itself. So each boat rider, like our rider behind, he owns this boat and basically they queue up at the boat entrance at this area waiting for passengers to come on. So they will basically just take turns and there's a total of 1,350 boats. You can imagine imagine like, how long it might take but I mean at least 100% comms goes to them like. Okay, so what you have just seen is the first cave of the tree that we've been going through. So it's 20 meters wide and it's 127 meters long. And also there will be times where the tides are high. However, among the tree, this is the only one you can go through even though if it's high tide. And high tide is about around September. So do take note of that. If it's high tide, second and third cave, you might not be able to go through. And Kong Island was from here. Cave number two. So if it's high tide, cave two won't be able to go in. La. And as you can tell, the ceiling is quite shallow. second cave and it's 60 meters long and how wide? Uh, also 20 meters. So that was the third cave and the last cave which is only 45 meters long and right at the end of 45 meters uh, basically there will be boats selling your drinks and fruits so uh, it feels like a scam but I mean just Buy la. bought coconut, we bought pineapple, and we actually bought drinks for the guy. <laughs> Her jacket got fan. Cool shit. So yeah, I'm gonna roll back right now and gonna attempt to fly the drone. Uh, don't know whether it will actually work out, so cross our fingers. I, fly, I can fly from there. Yeah, I think Taking off from a boat. So I just flew the drone and I'm not sure if it's nice because uh, the drone signal is strong but the I couldn't view it on my phone, I'm not too sure why. Uh, it keeps lagging very very badly so I just blind flying and if it's nice you'll see it on the screen but if it's not then uh, yeah that's why. So now we are heading back, we are more or less done with the boat ride. So we just finished some um, Kok River boat tour. Overall, I would say it's a really, really nice tour. It was quite fun. However, my back was really, really pain because we sat for too long. I would say the price is relatively affordable. Yeah, definitely must try it. So check out the shots that I took and enjoy. So now we're gonna make our way to the next location, which is a pagoda before making our way back to Hanoi. So what's up guys, we are at our last stop at Ning Bing. I cannot say it with a straight face. <laughs> Big Dope. <laughs> Big Dope Pagoda. Basically you can go in but we are not going in because we are there. We are not just properly but uh, the more iconic thing about it is the uh, front gate of this pagoda where everybody always take pictures which is just there. So here's the picture we took. So uh, this is more or less 
done of our Ningbing trip. La. What's up guys, so we have finally come to the end of our 20 hours in Ningbing and we have explored a total of four places. <laughs> yeah, it was very rushed for us because we will be only here in Vietnam for five days. That's all we have for Ningbing, but we will definitely come back and explore again. Do you like this place? See, she got the hat, man. So yeah, if you did enjoy this video, remember to like, share and subscribe and do support us because we need to reach that 1k goal sub. We are currently at 430 subs, so please watch on because uh, that's my goal. Lah. Like, share and subscribe. Ding. So by the time you're watching this, it's probably near the end of the year. So do watch my other vlogs from Vietnam and also Thailand and also my other videos. Lah. So bye guys.